It's not clicking for me right wow. now. But uh, yeah, I've talked to him and they helped me out with uh, just some simple stuff and play calling and just understanding how it is in the league. Right. Did you know what the Cowboys uh, Yeah, I did yesterday. Is that formal or informal? Uh, informal. Uh, what do you think about the Cowboys? Well, I like them a lot. It'll be it'll be great to go play in Texas and be closer to home. So. Have you met with the Broncos? Or anything? Uh, yeah, I had a formal meeting with the Broncos uh, two days ago. What was your impressions of that? Uh, I enjoyed it. I like it. Uh, I like how they came off. Uh, I like the energy. Uh, I think they like me. I'm not really sure, but I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I like them as a team. I like how they presented and how they did everything. So it was pretty smooth. Did they talk to you about having a pass rush or is it more? First and second. Uh, yeah, they did talk to me about my past rush. They just basically said the same thing. It's something I can improve on. Uh, it's something I can get better at. When they, what was the most challenging part of the interview? Uh, intellectually challenging? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say the interview was challenging. Uh, I pretty much did everything, uh, understood everything. Probably just uh, remembering like uh, uh, assignment on one of the things that they showed me, but for the most part, I still got it done. It just took me a little second to remember. Do you have like I was gonna say, do you have like a, a mental technique for like when you go through that process? They bring something up early, recall it. Do you have something that kind of you go through your mind, make sure you've got that? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I learned that at Florida State, just uh, being a, being taking notes and being able to remember things on the fly because at Florida State, just like in the NFL, we put stuff in every day uh, during spring ball, so it kind of builds the habit of being able to remember things and make certain keys and notes. What was it like playing at Florida State, um, in particular with Odell and um, Mike Norvell? That was a great opportunity. I enjoyed it. Uh, it's something I never – if I could go back, I'd do it the same way I did it. Uh, it was it was a learning experience. I learned a lot. It made me mentally tougher. It made me stronger. Uh, it built me up for the next level. And, yeah. What type of team was great in this It was a great team, uh, We both learned from each other. Uh, we both watched film. That was one of the guys that I mostly watched film with. We were the two that watched film together the most because he go in at the same time. We sit up there and watch film for a few hours. So it was good to be able to be around him and learn from him and uh, get some of the same experiences he got. Have you met with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers yet? Uh, no. Who are some guys in the league you kind of watch and try to take something from when you watch them on the team? Uh, probably Jeffrey Simmons, Fletcher Cox, Chris Jones, more guys that are kind of bigger, you know. Talk about some of the challenges of being a student athlete as well as being a father. Um, I know you have your son who has um, fat issues as well. Uh, yeah, it's real challenging, but at the end of the day, I just try to focus on wherever my feet are. Uh, I always call my son every night. I FaceTime him every night to be able to talk to him and uh, stuff like that. But it's, it's probably, it's when he was first born, it was the hardest because he had all those uh, respiratory surgeries and cardiovascular stuff going on. So he had a lot of surgeries and I really just couldn't be there because I had to go to football practice and I had to be prepared for the upcoming season and stuff. But uh, I just I went home every chance I got. So I just tried to be there as much as I could. Uh, my son knows who I am. He loves me. When I get ready to go home this weekend after this uh, to celebrate his birthday because it's today. Hey, man, you said you take something from Jeffrey Simmons. Have you talked to the Titans or with any other Titans players? Uh, no, I haven't. Have you met with the Steelers? Uh, no. Is your son a big part of, like, your – I always love the game of football, but uh, having him and then having younger siblings and being able to show them the way because I'm the first in my family to be able to even go to college. So uh, I already set that example because now my younger brother is playing football at Mississippi State, and I have a younger brother that's uh, on my dad's side that uh, plays high school football at Gulfport. And so he looks up to me, and he's, he's a big guy also. So it's just being able to set the example for guys back home that didn't have the – the opportunity to shine or have the recruiting or anything like that, just showing them that anything is possible if you put your mind to it and you can do it. To go back to the Broncos for a second, one thing I know Sean Payton values is smart football players. So, like, how would that sort of environment bring out the best in you? Uh, I feel like any environment I go into to bring out the best in me because at the end of the day, I know how to adjust to any situation. Uh, I've had three different D-line coaches since I've been in college, so I can adjust to any and everything I need to be. Like that's how we are. Informal. How was that? Uh, it was, no, I don't think I did meet the Texas. I don't think I did meet the Texas. What would it be like playing for? If you got drafted by the Texas, what would it be like playing for a coach like Nico Ryan's and that swarm mentality defense? Uh, I think it'd be great because uh, that's how we play at Florida State. The swarm mentality. Everybody gets the ball. When the ball moves, we all move. Yeah. Expound on that a little bit more. What was it like playing in Coach Fuller's defense? What were some attributes that you would describe that? 
uh, aggressive, violent. Uh, if, you, if you're not gonna hit nobody, you can't play for us. Who helped you get here? Tell us about your family coming up, going to football practice, Pop Warner, all that kind of stuff. Shine the spotlight on the people that helped get you to this point. Uh, I first started playing football because my older brother, uh, he played, and then I just followed behind him because at one point it was just me and him before my mom had my brother and my sister. Uh, we had been through the most together. And so once he started playing, I started playing, uh, and I just followed after him. But he uh, stopped playing after junior college, and I didn't really know I could go to college until I got my first offer. So, And when people told me I got my first offer, I was like, what that mean? And it was like, you can go to college for free. And so it's just, I'm not used to have, I wasn't used to getting those opportunities. I didn't understand like really the process of everything because I was the first, I really had no leeway, no guidance on being able to take the next step. You know, uh, I was just playing football because I love the game and I love being able to hit people. Um, and my mom, my dad, they stayed in my life. Uh, both parents are in my life, they aren't together though, but I could call them and talk to them about any and everything. Uh, they helped, even though, we didn't have everything we needed with growing up with my mom. Uh, it made me the person I am today. It helped me mature faster. It helped me understand and be able to adapt to a lot of stuff because there was a lot of situations I didn't expect, but it was a lot of situations I had to adapt to regardless because of just how it was. When did you realize the NFL was more than just a dream, but a goal? Uh, I probably have to say my second year at Florida State when I when. Uh, Jermaine Johnson was there, and it started to click for me, and I started to learn from here, from him and Kiara Thomas, and uh, it just started to click for me, and I started to make a lot of more plays, and my, I got some buzz around my name, you know, and I just felt like, yeah, I, was, yeah, I got some buzz around my name, and it just, it just went up from there. A lot of people talk about the transfer portal, um, but obviously it's helped you. What was, what was that like early on in your process, and why? What made you pick Florida State? Uh, it was kind of tough in the process because, uh, and I ain't even gonna say I picked Florida State, Florida State chose me. Um, I was originally coming out of Mississippi State and I wasn't planning on going to Florida State, but some stuff had happened and I ended up having to go there. And it was probably the best decision that could have happened in my life because it turned out for the best and look where I'm at now. Maybe like I got here a little bit late, so I apologize if you've been asked this already, but what is your why? Uh, the love of the game and my son and being able to show the kids back home that even though we might come from a small city, you can make something happen. Being able to take being able to take Florida State from three and six when Mike first started, five and seven, ten and three, thirteen and zero. That we don't worry about the other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but um, what was it like being able to see it at its lowest as a program, and then obviously seeing it at one of its highest points? Uh, it was amazing, man. Because even though uh, not many people know, even in high school, uh, we went seven and six, and then we went. 0-12 and, and then turned around and went 12-2 my senior year. So I've always been a part of getting things back on track and being able to help transform the program. Uh, it was crazy because nobody would ever thought, but we knew already, like going after that 10-3 season, we knew it was an undefeated season coming. So we was prepared to go do whatever it needed to be at, at whatever cost it was. Do you think the Florida State has pushed to look back at kind of what Brian Burns has done? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say I could too much model out of that because he's a quicker, more being a year uh, edge guy. So uh, I'll probably have to say looking at Derek Nadia, like D Tigers and stuff, guys that I play, that have played my position and stuff like that. Uh, and I'll probably just say uh, the dominance and the consistency. Baby, what have you been doing in terms of training to get ready for the combine? Where have you been working? Uh, I've been working out at uh, Athletes Innovation in Tampa, and I've just been working, uh, trying to get more flexible in my hips and my ankle band. How have you seen those, uh, those exercises benefiting you going into the routine that you'll have uh, coming up here in Indiana? Uh, I feel like they'll help me bend more, show people I could move well, and no stiffness in my ankles or my hips. Where will you go back there after the combine? Uh, yes, sir, I will. And then do you know when your pro day is? Uh, March 22nd. How much are you looking forward to? this process and you know, learning more about the teams and, and having a destination? I'm looking forward to it all, man. Just being the first in my family to be able to come to something like this. So I'm just taking it all in. So whenever my little brother gets ready or my other little brother gets ready or my son gets ready for this process, I can teach them and show them the way. From a technique standpoint, where do you feel like your game is at its highest level as you get ready to acclimate to the NFL? Uh, what you mean, like position? Yeah, just like technique, stuff in the run, rushing the passer. You know, what, what are some strengths of your game as you see as leaving college? Uh, I'd probably say my power, my contact, my uh, my knock back off the ball, being able to move grown men around by myself, and just having fun and throwing people around. Like That's probably like the thing I love the most, being able to throw men around. <laughs> How special was that defense and playing with all those 
guys around you that, that are here and you're going to be you know, seeing on Sunday? Oh, it was real special because I saw everybody put in the work to get where they wanted. Nobody took days off. Nobody half-assed. Everybody was doing what needed to be done to be able to ball like that and put, put them in a position. Do you have a favorite victory from last season that stands out to you? Uh, the championship, the ACC championship, because that was the first one in a while. So <laughs> that's probably it. Thank you. Describe luck. Fabian Lovett as a D tackle in the NFL. What are they? What is the team getting with you? Uh, hard work for somebody who's going to give you everything he's got. Um, no problems, uh, a great leader, a natural leader. I'm not trying to do too much. I'm gonna try to get to know my teammates. So whenever time comes, we can talk about certain things when things are hard or challenging or anything. And somebody that's gonna always uh, be where you need to be, uh, that's it. There was a lot of talk about opting out of bowl games. And I, I know you don't have a, a means of like figuring that out yourself, but. We're asking a lot of the guys, how does it fix that? How can college football change so that maybe guys don't opt out? Uh, you just sound like bowl games in general or in our situation? Well, just across the board. I'm not, I'm not just talking about Florida State, but there are a lot of players that if it wasn't a, a Final Four game, they opted out. Now, maybe that changes with an expanded playoff. Maybe it doesn't. But I don't know, as a player perspective, I mean, how do, you, how do you change that for you guys? I don't necessarily think you would just change it because at the end of the day, a lot of guys are older and trying to get ready for the draft and combine and stuff. So I feel like in those situations like that, that's probably just like the main problem. I mean, you can't begrudge a guy for wanting to make a business decision, is what you're saying. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's a business. When at the end of the day, if I get hurt, they're going to bring somebody else in. So at the end of the day, I got to do what's best for me. No, I, I hear you. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not against it. I just know that that's a popular topic because so many, like Marvin opted out of, you know, the Ohio State game, you yeah. know, even though. Uh, but you got to think, he's, he's a first round draft pick. Uh, yeah. People going to be gunning for him when they play against him. So it, I understand why he did it to preserve his body and not take a chance to get hurt because he's probably the, he's the best player on their team. So a lot of guys are going to be targeting him and anything could happen when somebody's targeting him. Did you opt out of yours? Uh, yes, sir, I did. So you understand that more than a lot of guys did. Yeah. And I know you guys probably ate a lot of crap for that, or at least people criticize that. Yeah, but a lot of people don't understand what goes into football. A lot of people that are talking that have never played football before, so they'll never understand what's actually going on. Yeah, I mean, you, you can explain it all until you're blue in the face, but they don't get it. Exactly. <laughs> but when you get paid, then all of a sudden it makes more sense. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate yes, your Yes, sir. Honor. Thank you. How nice is it to go to the NFL where they don't select who goes on in the next round? Uh, yeah, that's that's great because it ain't no picking and choosing with whatever's going on. So at the end of the day, if we was in the NFL, we would have been one of those top teams. So. Talk about, yeah, 12, 12 teammates be able to make it. What does it just feel like to be a part of that kind of excellence at Florida State? And uh, does it make man. the combine experience a little more fun? Uh, yeah, it does. I saw a lot of the guys when I first got here, but I saw the rest of them uh, yesterday. So it was just chopping it up when I first seen them. Uh, it was just like seeing my brother again, man. It made it made everything more smooth. It made everything more calm. It made everything more relaxing. Because it's like I got guys around me that's going through the same process. Can you explain the significance of wearing zero? I mean, you're a big dude. Big dude wearing single digit. Can you talk about what you're wearing on zero? Uh, honestly, I always wanted zero, like even before it came out. Like it was weird because I uh, used to see uh, Russell Westbrook wear it in basketball at uh, OKC. So like it clicked in my mind like one day I was just chilling. And I was like, I wonder would they ever release zero. And so when they finally did, I was like, yeah, I got to have it. <laughs> What if you can't have zero? What number will be more? Uh, I'll probably try to go back to 54, my old one. Have you met with the 49ers at all, formally or informally? Uh, no. Is there a team that you actually just used to grow, root for growing up that you wouldn't uh, mind playing for? I was a Steelers fan, but at the end of the day, whoever picked me, that's where I'm going to go ball at. <laughs> yes, sir. I understood that. Thanks, man.